Good afternoon, everyone. It's my honor to welcome back you all our to our second session. It's a great pleasure for me to introduce our beloved speaker, Dr. Mohanji Sir. He has completed his B.Tech and M.Tech in Energy Management School of Energy and Environmental Science, University of Indore, and he has done his PhD in Mechanical Engineering from IIT Madras. IIT Madras. He has various experience in professional college as a professor in mechanical engineering. His latest project project was proposal on hydrogen solution submitted and presented by five institutes, and Dr. Mohanji is of NCT College of Engineering under the call materials of energy conservation and storage platform platform has been approved and recommended for support by DST Government of India. Currently, he is working as a professor and a head department of Me mechanical engineering, SCT College of Engineering, Trivandrum. We are so privileged to have him on this session with us on behalf of Muslia College of Engineering. I welcome you, sir. So over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you for the, your invitation and your kind introduction. Today, uh, you are actually dealing with the latest emerging trends in mechanical engineering. So definitely, as the transportation is concerned, the hydrogen is definitely an emerging technology. Going to change the future of uh, the India, to the future of Kerala and the whole world itself. And this the technology of attraction uh, actually uh, due to its inherent uh, to be mainly focusing on the need for hydrogen hydrogen technology and uh, the important hydrogen storage options uh, and Sally Uh, so, uh, just I'll be starting on my presentation. I think uh, you can this is visible uh, to all of you. Is it audible? It is uh, is clear. Okay. Audible. There's actually so, yeah, it's visible. Yeah. Yes, visible, sir. Visible, sir. Yeah, 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 fine. Yes, fine. Listen, sir. Yeah, thank you. We'll start uh, an introduction on hydrogen. So hydrogen is considered as the most abundant element on Earth, but does not occur free in nature. It is because in the form of uh, water, it is abundantly available. So the globe itself, in that uh, the water, you know, it forms the, uh, it is covering the entire earth, and even uh, in combination with uh, many other materials available in and other hydrocarbons, and all these other hydrocarbons. So we have a lot of hydrogen available, but only thing is, it is not available in its pure form. Uh, if you look at the periodic table, the lightest of the elements with an atomic weight is actually uh, the lightest. It offers the issues such as leakage because it is very light, the very uh, very light gas, so it is prone to an easy leakage. So unlike uh, other gases such as um, oxygen or nitrogen or any other gas uh, for that matter nitrogen uh, uh, a lot of leakage even a micron size gap in the storage vessel can lead to 
the liquid and hydrogen is and the boiling point is hydrogenic ranges minus 252.77 degrees celsius and the density is very low so 0.0899 grams per liter definitely it has the connection with weight of hydrogen it is very light so um, this also uh, contribute to the higher amount of leakage of hydrogen from any system and when hydrogen is bond in air the main product is water then advantage uh, from our the pollution standpoint because if hydrogen is combined with it combines with oxygen water so upon combustion we get water and if we do it in a, in our if it is in along with the air so it way it can produce so as the hydrogen uh, the uh, combustion temperature is so doesn't matter much but if you can definitely uh, use this hydrogen uh, in fuel cell powered automobiles so where the burn the burning can be avoided uh, we have the electrochemical reaction so in the fuel cells we have the electrochemical reaction and we can overcome the second law limitations because aim nowadays to increase the efficiency of the <laughs> in the efficiency of uh, the conversion so here the conversion efficiency is rate limited it is limited by uh, the second law barrier so in the second according to second law barrier we can't cross a certain amount of uh, we can't cross uh, even a maybe like a 40 percentage uh, efficiency uh, mainly because some heat has to be Mainly rejected that if you are making use of fuel cell uh, as the conversion device. So in such cases, uh, uh, this may not be a problem. And here you can uh, reach the efficiencies of the order of uh, 60%, 70%, etc. And even uh, there is actually no barrier, no theoretical barrier for that. Even you can just improve upon that. If you are going for uh, the IC engine, that is not possible. Definitely, some amount of heat has to be rejected to the surroundings. Mostly, you have to reject at least a sixty percentage of uh, the heat. So that is something that uh, all of you are aware again. So and then uh, coming to what is the advantage if you compare to other fuels? What what is the advantage uh, for uh, so? This is actually the chemical is around three times. It is three times the fuel such as gasel, uh, so, so for diesel and all uh, diesel or petrol. It is, yeah. Pardon? Oh, pardon? Is it audible? Any issues? Sir, no issues. Sir. You can continue. Continue. Yeah. yeah okay. So uh, it is uh, for. Uh, the calorific value is the, the lower calorific value for gasoline may be of the order of 50 megajoules per kg but it is almost uh, three times uh, maybe like a 2.8 times uh, 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 or 2.8 kg of gasoline so this is definitely an important advantage so now uh, coming to the safety issues because when uh, the uh, the hydrogen the possibility of application of in some devices in or whatever in maybe the our normal uh, anxiety will be the safety issues the risk of explosion uh, so that comes into our mind so definitely hydrogen is not toxic but uh, this explosion can be uh, an issue it comes to our mind definitely this is actually uh, true it is partly true and partly false because uh, if hydrogen this uh, the uh, advent in one way uh, this hydrogen fire is not the, not if you have enough in that fire will go to the top because hydrogen is light that will be actually 
will be in the upward direction and it will not cause any kind of a fatality or uh, the problem so that but definitely if you are the fire taking place within uh, your room definitely it is really uh, an issue because of the two reasons so definitely it can lead to an explosion so you can see that uh, here the explosion energy it is 2045 it is almost comparable with gasoline so this so definite problem is the hydrogen uh, is actually uh, it doesn't have any color so hydrogen uh, upon combustion so you you can't see it is invisible the flame is invisible unlike uh, maybe uh, the petrol or diesel it may be having a blue color or maybe a, a yellow color if it is incomplete combustion but here actually it's a white color it is actually uh, uh, no color so we can say it is colorless so, so if some uh, uh, ignition taking place, some combustion taking place in some part of the room, we may not even notice. Unless otherwise, if it is actually somebody standing and is catching fire to other things, so this will not be visible. So that is an issue. So, uh, so it has got an advantage and it has got a disadvantage as well. So we will just look at the property of uh, the hydrogen on par with uh, gasoline and methane. Density is actually definitely it is the lightest of all. It has got 0.084 kg per meter cube. Coefficient of air diffusion coefficient in air is not that diffusive in air. Uh, then coming to the specific heat, it is comparatively very high. Specific heat is 14.31. Then the ignition limit, this is actually one has to look into it. This is another important thing that makes hydrogen fire, uh, it is very dangerous. It has got the range you can see it is 4 to 75 volume percentage. That means hydrogen is prone to combustion at a low concentration and at high concentration. It is a high concentration and maybe like a 4 percentage to a very lean mixture, maybe over 75 volume percentage, whatever it may be. So if it is too rich or too lean, uh, uh, prone to combustion. But if it is a too rich mixture, you can see that too rich or too lean mixture, the gasoline, the range is very less. 1 to 7.6 and 5.32 up to 50. But here, this, the upper limit is 75. So that we have to mark this point. This hydrogen is prone to combustion to a very uh, high volume percentage. So this, even if there is a very small uh, hydrogen leakage, so this is this and it is available. It is available in a very low volume percentage or a very high volume percentage. So this is prone to combust. Uh, uh, this uh, another important thing is ignition energy. Ignition energy is actually very less compared to that. Ignition energy in uh, megajoules it is very less. The ignition temperature you have to look into it because it has got it is compatibly very high because if you consider the adiabatic flame temperature of hydrogen this will be actually very high it's considered to be the highest so uh, uh, from the thermodynamics point of view itself if you are uh, engine definitely you are getting a high source temperature that leads to a higher efficiency even if you are using it in a simple IC engine uh, one advantage uh, then explosion energy we have already mimics emissivity you can in one seven so i have told you that it is colorless so due to actually the flame emissivity is very low so if it is uh, flame emissivity high means it may be a, like a yellow color it will lead to a high emissivity but here it has got a very low emissivity uh, so we have to look into uh the storage aspects so before uh, coming to that uh so we have to look into the usage of hydrogen so even uh to on a global scale what is happening so what is the state of the art as far as the hydrogen usage is concerned uh, kerala has gone in a big way uh, for hydrogen uh, even our uh, uh, respected 
principal secretary for transport uh, jodhi Lal, sir, so he has taken role in uh, popularizing the uh, application of hydrogen for transport in Kerala because Kerala is actually one of the very few states where we can possibly use it to uh, the best economic advantages because we have. how plenty of water so you can uh, go for hydrogen production in a big way using water because we have a lot of water body available the in maybe a clean water or maybe a brackish water we have a lot of water available and another thing is uh, you have the possibility of you can using the renewable sources of energy for the production of hydrogen maybe uh, by you using an electrolysis process and another advantage is actually we have got uh, the petronet lng located in you are all i think many of you are aware so this methane or the natural gas it could be uh, used as a source for hydrogen because the or any hydrocarbon you can convert into hydrogen using uh, our steam methane okay so we have got that location because the kochi we have got uh, uh, the very um, resource source of hydrogen that is natural gas storage uh, stations are available so that is uh, another reason uh, and even the bpcl we have in the bpcl they are producing hydrogen so they are making use uh, using hydrogen as well and there is a petcock available even that petcock petcock actually now it is actually they are wasting they are just throwing it down convert that petcock into hydrogen so so all these uh, industries availability of uh, the availability of the industries in kerala such as the petronet lng then uh, the bpcl so and uh, the availability of plenty of water so this makes uh, the production of hydrogen and even a hydrogen economy in kerala is actually really uh, a good idea it's uh, make it uh, really viable so in kerala has taken up uh, in a big way even uh, there are uh, uh, thousands of buses actually they are planned maybe like uh, some uh, something like uh, more than 10000 uh, automobiles uh, going to appear in our roads in another 5 uh, to 10 years so in another 5 years i think as part of the planning and then uh, the uh, store um, storage and uh, fueling stations refueling stations uh, are actually coming up in uh, maybe like in a couple of years so uh, kerala is actually going in a big way and uh, if you consider um, the total intent scenario has got uh, one of the maximum potential for the usage of hydrogen and even kerala is actually a um, uh, Uh, state uh, where the ecology is very important uh, we are giving a lot of emphasis uh, on the preserving our uh, environment so from that point of view hydrogen is considered to be the best okay and uh, you may have feeling that why we have the battery electric vehicles that is available definitely yes battery is actually uh, equally uh, ecological uh, uh, but a possibility it's a, a good possibility but the issue with the battery electric vehicles is the uh, transportation range in the within the city limits if you want a pa passenger transport then definitely um, the battery can be a good uh, opportunity it's a good alternative but if you are uh, if you want uh, some 400 kilometers or even more ranges maybe like a uh, 500 to 1000 kilometers or even more so definitely battery so battery uh, definitely if you so definitely has got uh, uh, the if you adopt the swapping method or maybe a charging this uh, this the technology is not very much proven charging of the battery uh, it takes a very long time now and another problem with the battery operated electric vehicles is uh, so we need lithium batteries so lithium batteries actually uh, is not manufacturing in india and we don't have lot of lithium available issue and it is going to be a bit more expensive compared to hydrogen 
uh, it will be uh, barring more than energy i think we don't have, you know we don't need uh, much of thing and india is a country where we have got a lot available and this energy we can make use of for the production of hydrogen so the economical standpoint uh, the hydrogen can be active we compared to battery but uh, definitely the battery technology is developing really fast so battery technology is actually uh, improving the progressing really fast and uh, definitely uh, it has got a role in the city transport uh, so that is about the viability and uh, on a national scale on um, uh, kerala kerala uh, this is actually uh, considered to be the best uh, uh, alternative so even the worldwide what is the if you ask me what is the worldwide status in different countries like china um, most of the many of the european countries then definitely uh, australia uh, canada us so everybody has taken up a it is in there the priority list as a uh, the best possible source uh, for energy for transportation so definitely um, there is a large number of uh, pilot studies are taking place everywhere in the world uh, so definitely uh, it is going to come up in a big way and a uh, in a global scale so that is about the some idea on the potential of uh, hydrogen so so definitely hydrogen economy reality in another 5 to 10 years almost sure so uh, if you are considering the hydrogen economy uh, so there are three important parts the first one is the generation of second is the transportation of hydrogen third is the storage of hydrogen and finally fourth one is the usage of hydrogen and the first three aspects uh, very important this is actually uh, the storage of uh, for the production of hydrogen we have at present we have got electrolysis uh, electrolysis route then we have got the steam methane so if you are comparing these two steam methane reforming and uh, electrolysis routes so for the automobile or the transportation purpose we will normally uh, prefer the electrolysis route because you need a very high quality or the hydrogen with the highest purity that is required is of the order of 99.97 or 95 of so that is the order of purity that is required for hydrogen going for the steam methane reforming steam methane reforming is not that much of an energy intensive process in many countries uh, there is uh, plenty of hydrocarbon is available this, economically this may be viable for certain countries in uh, uh, India also, we have got a lot of if the lot of natural gas available, so then it can be a very good feedstock for the production. So, but the problem here is the hydrogen pure because in the initial stage, it may be all these hydrocarbons are as everybody is aware of. It contains lot of sulfur, so this sulfur will be a poison uh, if you are considering its application application of of hydrogen in the fuel cell cathode and the anode so this sulfur can uh, permeate into that and it will make it will act as a poison it will damage the total fuel cell the metal hydride as a storage device definitely sulfur or sulfur dioxide it can act as a poison so that is an issue so for the application of hydrogen in for vehicular applications for transients we need a very high more than 99.9 percentage so uh, if you are going for steam methane reform need other uh, purification method maybe like a string absorbers we require to make it much more pure uh, it will add add on to the cost as well 
uh, selection of the technology that depends on uh, um, one different factors like availers and uh, energy price, electricity price, and uh, all the other things. These are the two important uh, uh, generation method. Now coming to the transportation. Uh, transportation, uh, if you are talking about transportation, uh, this transported hydrogen can be transported in the big vessels, in ships. That means we can transport hydrogen. We can transport hydrogen in trucks. In, uh, we can transport hydrogen in pipelines. So all these are uh, different possibilities. So there is no big issue here. Even if you are going for a hydrogen pipeline, it's going to be the best for Kerala because uh, the transportation through land or even uh, the um, you can make use of the water transport also. So that is also a good possibility of hydrogen in low quantities but if you want a very big uh, amount of hydrogen to be transported definitely you have to go for a um, transportation using pipeline but, uh, the transportation of hydrogen so now coming to the storage of hydrogen so this is actually a critical issue it is an important issue because here we have uh, the hydrogen uh, its uh, density is very less so even uh, if you store hydrogen, so it has got, uh, it's a very, you can consider it to be compared to the gasoline or petrol that is uh, gasoline or diesel that is available in as a liquid. This is available as a gas. So the issue here is the energy density, energy density per liter. Energy density per liter is actually comparatively very less for hydrogen cases you can go for a two three different method one is the compression of hydrogen so in such cases to get a decent uh, amount of that should be available in our storage tank so we have to go for a very high pressures the pressure may be of the order of 300 bars if we, uh, nowadays uh, the uh, cars and uh, buses are available so they need they are making use of the compressed storage so there uh, in the buses they are making use of the hydrogen should be stored at a pressure that may be of the 350 bar okay so that is uh, so you need a very high pressure so this is another issue here is this very high pressure that makes uh, the storage this storage is much more it can very easily leak out the pressures is prone to leakage and these vehicles are actually uh, running on the roads any wear and tear that can happen it can the hydrogen can leak out through even a micro level micro holes or a very small micro level gaps then uh, uh, this can be really so this uh, can lead to uh, explosion um, because even a very small percentage of hydrogen in air in a very lean mixture or a very rich mixture, it can go, uh, it can lead to a combustion and lead to an explosion. So there is definitely associated with that. So uh, if you are going for uh, the uh, storage of hydrogen in cars, so Mirai, Mirai is actually Toyota Mirai. So they have got a hydrogen car. In that, we need uh, the hydrogen. The pressure is with the order of 700 bar, nearly 700 bar. So you can think how huge the pressure is. OK, so definitely uh, the storing anything within a such higher pressure that require, uh, that causes a lot of uh, safety issues. Uh, so that is very important. And next, second possibility is we have to go for the liquefied form of hydrogen. So liquefied uh, form of hydrogen, so we have with many car companies, many automobile car companies have uh, done a lot of research on that, be one of the pioneers in this area. So they have developed a very, um, a very sophisticated uh, uh, cryogenic tank because the liquefaction of hydrogen units, it will be normally, it will be, I told you, in maybe the, um, the boiling point is minus 252 degrees Celsius. So this is actually a cryogenic uh, liquid. Cryogenic, we need a cryogenic technology. So your vessel has to be, your uh, container has to be really sophisticated. It uh, needs a multi-layer insulation. You need a vacuum insulation. 
patent so makes the total device to be really expensive so another problem uh, in uh, this liquefied storage is actually evaporation losses so so that is uh, about the liquefied technology uh, um, not many players in this field nobody um, not many in a big way and another uh, and the most important important technology is the solid state uh, storage of hydrogen so history even even uh, the hydrates were not to man even uh, very long back itself so uh, this hydrate is one possibility and you can see that it will offer the best one of the best oleometric storage capacities compared compared to the compressed and the liquefied form of hydrogen so you can see that there is uh, uh, from this uh, figure given by slab bag and uh, zittal in nature so uh, they have given the hydrogen uh, that is stored 4 kg of hydrogen that is stored in uh, different forms so you can see magnesium hydride that is the offer the lowest volume highest volumetric uh, capacity so this is uh, actually the capacity sorry capacity uh, volume wise it needs the lowest volume and uh, lanthanum nickel 5 lna5 is 6 so a bigger uh, container for uh, 4 kg of hydrogen storage and hydrogen liquid it is still higher so even compared to the liquefied form still the solid state hydrogen storage is better in terms of the volumetric storage capacity and you can see the 200 bar hydrogen how Okay, in, uh, in cars, that is the reason why they are they want a very small container because it has got a very less space available. So that is why they are actually storing hydrogen on the order of three months. Okay, so uh, you can see uh, how much hydrogen would be required for a reasonable range for 400 kilometers. Maybe consider like a to and fro uh, journey between. Uh, Uh, Trivandrum and uh, Ernakulam, uh, uh, maybe approximately something like that. Maybe it will come around uh, for 50 kilometers, but still it is somewhat closer to that. So you need an electric car with a fuel cell. It require 4 kg of hydrogen. If you are going for the combustion engine, you will need double that, 8 kg of hydrogen because of poor efficiency of IC engines. and then if you are going for combustion engine with a paired 24 kg of petrol so you can see that only 1/6 actually of kg of hydrogen is required 1/6 one, one uh, the kg of the fuel is uh, required for a uh, uh, electric car between uh, trivandrum and kochi is the kind of advantage that you can get over these are uh, many of these stages i already discussed the compressed gas uh, as a compressed gas so it is it has to be stored in a very high pressure uh, dedicated pressure vessel you have to put it another issue here is actually the hydrogen is a gas that is prone to um, kind of hydrogen embed so you can go for uh, any uh, uh, kind of uh, copper or uh, many other maybe in mild steel and uh, so all these ki kind of metals you can't go S uh, stainless steel and uh, another possibility will be aluminum definitely but aluminum uh, the issue is your fasteners your connectors to make it leak proof that will be a big issue even the uh, you are bracing aluminum and all it is very tedious very difficult uh, to making uh, a joint at a very high pressure for aluminum is difficult so even though uh, that is an option in some cases definitely our the first priority will be stainless steel tanks ss316 will be the best possibility so that, that will reduce uh, the hydrogen permeation and uh, the hydrogen embrittlement problems Uh, but the issue is m6 uh, definitely it has got a very high density that leads to make the total system very heavy so it will lead to a uh, low efficiency uh, for for the automobile so that is an issue so nowadays 
is people are coming up with um, composite tanks so composite uh, tanks are uh, a better option so many of these uh, recent uh, um, storage devices compressed gas devices they are actually coming up with uh, uh, it is available with uh, uh, composite technology so it is composite tanks and liquefied we have already discussed so we have got the boil, boil off uh, process and the equation the insulation become bulky and becomes uh, really expensive you can see the liquid will liquid liquefied hydrogen storage system here how many layers are there so this multi-layer insulation is actually really expensive so now the viable option uh, it could be the solid state hydrogen storage so but uh, definitely it has got its disadvantages as well so we will just touch upon that so uh, we will come to the solid state okay. solid state coming to the solid state hydrogen storage uh it is storing hydrogen as a hydride it is it can be you can do you can uh, um and in using two different methodologies one can be an absorption and another can be an adsorption okay so absorption and adsorption so in uh, then you will be getting high storage capacity adsorption nowadays slightly lesser storage capacity but it is coming up in a big way so uh, the you just uh, we are looking at the advantages it has got a high uh, volumetric density actually the price is actually much better we have seen that greater energy efficiency due to moderate pressure because in compressed storage you need a pressures of the order of 700 bar 350 bar so that require a lot of uh, energy in the compressors so the compressors have to compress to this much uh, high pressures so you need a lot of energy for that but if you are uh, taking metal hydrides uh, solid state hydrogen storage then the pressures may be of the order of less than 50 bar of uh, 80 bar on 100 bar so that is uh, if you are going for lanthan and nickel five in 15 to 20 bar so and even 10 bar sometimes so that is the kind of uh, the efficiency that you can achieve um, while the compressing the hydrogen so you'll be getting a better uh, uh, in a, from energy efficiency point of view that will be much better and then higher purity hydrogen output so that is another advantage because this hydrogen that is stored definitely that is that needs to be pure uh, uh, otherwise your total system will get and even uh, this can lead to a very large number of uh, cycles even this one can charge and release uh, hydrogen in a large number in thousands of cycles so that is possible so the reversibility is not a big issue in many of these hydrates okay and it is uh, safe for use because hydrogen will come out in a controlled way because if you heat it then only hydrogen will come out so the reaction you can sell will combine with the hydrogen and it will reversibly it produces uh, formation of metal hydrate and this is a reversible process this absorption process that is a forward process that is the absorption process is actually exothermic reaction and the reverse process is an endothermic reaction that you need some heating for hydrogen to come out and now look at how the charging and discharging taking place what is the physics behind it so that is one thing that we have to look into it so this hydrogen if it is available and this is the big one that you can see uh, this is actually a metal hydride so what happens is hydrogen will split into uh, hydrogen molecule will split into hydrogen atoms initially and then it will diffuse so it will diffuse so we'll just take a point here. diffuse to hydrogen lattice so that means this will uh, penetrate to the hydrogen lattice and initially it will remain as it is so that is known as alpha hydrate into hydrogen atoms hydrogen molecule is splitting into hydrogen atoms and it will diffuse into the hydrogen lattice and it will stay in the industrial and that particular state is known as alpha hydrogen it is shown it is alpha 
of is later what happens is well started forming bonds okay so upon forming bonds so what will happen is this alpha phase will be converted so it will be converted to beta phase with the absorption of, with the formation of bonds okay so there actually in this chemisorption so that, that is known as is known as chemisorption so chemisorption means absorption reaction that, that is taking place okay so the bond formation is actually your chemical reaction and so this transformation is considered to be the chemisorption process and alpha phase will be converted to the beta phase and this is the you can see that chemisorption will be actually the prominent mechanism a higher amount of hydrogen storage is concerned because in this region only it will absorb more hydrogen and again if you further uh, if you add hydrogen definitely it cannot absorb any more uh, hydrogen because it will reach a saturation state thing is converted to beta phase it reaches a saturation and it cannot absorb any more hydrogen and if you supply uh, still more hydrogen the hydrogen pressure will go up so that is what it is shown over here okay the pressure is again going up so this alpha uh, phase uh, to uh, a beta phase conversion so that is taking place so just uh, upon heating it it is actually reverse uh, reaction will take place it will but uh, the based on depending on the material uh, this may not happen this uh, actually uh, will not come back in path it will not come back So is it audible for all of you? Yes, sir. It's audible. Yes, sir. It's audible, right? Okay. So I have yeah. a small doubt. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. So I'll continue for a minute. Whether the presentation is visible? Yes, sir. It is visible. Okay. Okay. So now we are talking about conversion of alpha phase to beta phase. This is the physical mechanism behind the conversion of hydrogen. And uh, whatever you can see here, this is a important as uh, the van that shows the. Uh, Plateau pressure versus the 1 by t, it is actually normally shown in the log uh, plot. So it is a very important uh, equation, a very important correlation for the determination of the equilibrium pressure of hydrogen because this equilibrium pressure is very, we will discuss on that. So, now there is a kind of uh, uh, so you need I, I told you it is it involves a lot of uh, heat transformation heat release and heat absorption heat exchange you need a very good heat exchanger over there here so this is actually a, just a schematic of that and see the coolant is coming in uh, from the top it is going out the bottom so you have got an annular storage uh, uh, annular jacket uh, that is available for the circulation of water so the cooling water is circulated uh, through the outer uh, you can see the container container on the inside okay so this container uh, is actually the cross section of this is shown over here so you can see that it contains uh, the particle metal hydrate particles are filled inside and uh, there is a the centrally uh, there is actually a filter that is located a filter tube is located in the center then uh, this metal hydride powder that actually known as the hydride bed and this is actually your uh, storage container this is only a schematic otherwise it's actually 
actually the container has to be uh, pretty thick because actually a pressure vessel so uh, what happens is the method is like hydrogen will uh, enter the vessel it is actually distributed by the um, uh, filter tube to different parts different part of the storage container it will react with the metal it will react with the metal it combine uh, it combine with uh, hydrogen and forms metal hydride and uh, during that uh, released and this heat will be uh, transported to the water uh, water jacket that is provided the outside and then uh, uh, so that is once it is uh, this reaction will continue till the entire hydride bed become saturated so once it is saturated the rain will uh, will be absorbed there so later then what we will do is we will just heat it and take out the hydrogen so we will supply uh, the water at a higher temperature and uh, this will lead to the uh, hydrogen to come out of the filter tube so that is the working principle of the device what are the important issues so the important issues the engineering issues here the design issues or engineering issues is actually uh, the main issue is because this is actually a metal hydride is a powder for that matter it has got a low thermal conductivity because it has got the gases inside so you have got a particle here in maybe of the order of the particle size maybe of the order of uh, uh, one micron to 200 microns that is the an approximate range so it is in the few micron range particles and in between the particles and you have got hydrogen having a very low thermal conductivity even though the particle has got a slightly higher thermal conductivity of the order of 30 or 40 uh, watts per meter kelvin if you consider the effective thermal conductivity considering uh, for the total bed the thermal conductivity will be very low for this the um, this uh, uh, um, in this actually this kind of a situation is uh, they are in many case the powder beds so always the powder bed causes a very low thermal conductivity thermal conductivity will act as a barrier for the heat exchange to the outside and what will happen if there is a um, the if the heat uh, is, is actually uh, not going if there is a inside that what will happen so this will lead to a is it will lead to a high equilibrium pressure over there and this hydrogen storage take place due to the pressure difference be between the supply pressure and the equilibrium pressure so you have got a certain supply pressure and then nickel 5 you have got maybe suppose 10 bar is the uh, supply pressure what happens is uh, the temperature in this equilibrium pressure will so if you consider the Mm, supply pressure minus equilibrium pressure this pressure differential will get narrowed it will actually it will decrease this pressure differential between the supply pressure and the equilibrium pressure will decrease and, and this lead to a lower uh, charging rate will become very low so even though initially the charging will be really fast but later due to a low thermal conductivity bed that causes a heat barrier it causes a barrier for the rejection of heat this causes the reaction decrease decrease drastically and the charging rate the charging rate also will decrease drastically and you need a lot of time for the storage of hydrogen so this is the one of the most important as uh, important point as far as the metal hydrates are concerned or any solid state hydrogen storage is concerned means this is actually if you are considering many of these material they are actually brittle in nature so upon hydrogenation it will form a, a hydride so and this hydride will uh, yeah, this formation of hydride is associated with a volumetric expansion it may be of the order of 30 percentage or to 30 percentage lattice volume expansion will be uh, found in that case and this leads to a fragmentation it leads to the fragmentation of the particle after a few cycles everything all the metal hydrate particles we normally give it in the range of uh, 3 to 5 mm size that will be converted to micro level particle 
reach of the bed of the order between uh, one micron to two hundred microns. Some uh, something like uh, fifty cycles. Of all the particles. Another issue. And what happens is, if the particles are actually uh, it is, if it is pulverized. So what happens is, if you think of uh, the storage vessel. It will settle to the bottom. It will slowly settle to the bottom, the bottom. And what happens is, upon hydrogenation, what will happen? There is actually a lot of metal hydride that is located at the bottom. It will. Expand. So when it try to expand, you are there is a possibility for the failure of the container itself. A big issue: this pulverization and the settling, and then the. There is actually a conglomeration of the hydrogen uh, hydrate at the bottom. This leads to a uh, mechan. This actually leads to a very big uh, wall stress. Uh, lot of wall stress. The uh, amount of wall sitting in the bottom of the container to be very high. Failure of the container itself. So that is a big issue. So this you can see this. This uh, how that expansion takes place. Even though this. Uh, um, container is actually pretty thick. It is more than you know, five mm thick. It may be over eight mm or one centimeter thick. Still, there is actually a formation of this can actually bulge out. Okay, so an important issue. There is the wall stresses. Now this. Uh, so we have got at least I think some. So uh, I am. Just to showing you some of the import done uh, at uh, SCT uh, simulation, the modeling simulation, design of the devices. Because this is actually, please understand that metal hydride is not only used for the storage of hydrogen for many other applications. You can use it for refrigeration. You can uh, use it as a refrigerator or a heat. Use it as an actuator sensor. So uh, there are lot of opportunities available for the usage of metal hydrides or the solid state storage of hydrogen because this could be effective. This is prone to other uh, physical phenomena like uh, the heat storage and the heat. Uh, it is actually uh, an endothermic. So it is a thermally uh, controlled device. This can be actuated because you have got a volumetric expansion that is available, volumetric expansion and contraction. And this is also a reversible process. And you can think of an a sensor based on that. So there are uh, uh, different possibilities in addition to the uh, application of metal hydride as a storage, a storage medium. So there is some idea about uh, the simulation at uh, a city and other places. So these are uh, this gives uh, some more governing equations, some of the important governing equations, and uh, you can see that the equation three is actually the reaction kinetic expression reaction rate. So you can see that minus is C A by R T log P by P equilibrium rho s at minus rho s only this equation that i want to emphasize because the first part ca exponential minus ea by rt it is actually this reaction is actually controlled by three reaction kinetics that means it is the inherent character of the uh, metal hydride for the reaction so it has got uh, this the first uh, really reaction kinetic part second part is actually the pressure controlled or heat controlled part and finally the third one is a mass controlled uh, part so please understand i don't want to explain too much on the equation side please understand that this uh, equation is not very simple so application of this equation along with the conservation equations make uh, that's more tedious it's much more complicated and complex and so um, uh, this is actually a different uh, um, three different attributes for this reaction one is actually kinetics second is the pressure or heat transfer third is the mass transfer dependent for any system should take care of features so you can see the mass 
balance, energy balance, they are normal. So there's a work that is dress as part of my uh, PhD work. So here, in addition to uh, the uh, store, storage device that I have discussed, here you have got a, uh, in a centrally located uh, device and uh, you have got an outer uh, outer cooling jacket. So instead of that, if you want a very high amount of hydrogen to be stored, you can think of a device with a multiple heat exchanger tubes and multiple filters. So here the bigger circle. So here you have got the outer circle that is the container. Then the inside you can see small circles. So that is actually heat exchangers and the black ones are the filters. So filter will be distributing hydrogen and uh, the heat exchangers operating uh, through the heat exchanger tubes so this looks like a, something like a heat exchanger you can see that so in the 3d model you can see that there will be a large number of tubes over there so water it will be carrying the water so you can uh, use copper tubes for this purpose so that doesn't matter matter much and uh, here uh, you can see um, it come out in the other end and it will go out. So uh, you can, uh, uh, so that is uh, uh, all about uh, the uh, the storage device with the embedded heat exchanger. So this advantage is actually you can store a large amount of hydrogen useful for even vehicular application and in other areas where you need a more amount of hydrogen more amount of hydrogen story the other one then modular type with a single uh, uh, jacket and the uh, center can be used for other experimental applications and be a much more a practical device so this i don't know whether this how the hydrogen sorption taking place uh, really a, so let me see so whether it is so i don't know whether it will work this. So wait for a cup, uh, one minute. Let us see if it doesn't work, then I will just, just skip those slides. Okay, so that is not working. Properly. And now uh, this is a kind of uh, the uh, gas cooled uh, storage device. So in addition to a water cooled device, we can go for uh, gas cooled device that may be better used in areas where air for cooling is available. Even for the vehicular uh, application, automobile applications, you can make use of the airflow over there. And you can uh, make use of that air as the cooling medium. Instead of water, you can use air as the uh, cooling medium. And this is uh, the one with uh, uh, so many provided. So we have provided several plate fins over here. So another with one with uh, radial fin with the plate fins, we have studied the performance. I'll show uh, the results based on that for the radial fin type color. So where the heat will be removed and initially there will be that is generated due to a very vigorous reaction and later once uh, the hydrogen is getting absorbed then the rate of reaction will reduce and then it's more cooler so that uh, you can see how that uh, uh, saturation uh, of the metal hydrate take place here. So how the absorption place, absorption process take place inside the container, you can see that. Just amount of hydrogen, amount of uh, liberated, initially it will be very high, and later the total device gets cooled up. This is for the tube bundle with the plate heat exchangers. So you can see the multiple tubes that is provided provided uh, here that is the, the circular one these circles are actually the metal uh, tubes that is filled with the metal and uh, uh, the outside one is actually the floor domain so you can 
see how the air is progressively getting heated from one end to the from inlet to the exit and you can see how there is a concentration it gets increased that the concentration will be higher at the there is higher uh, cooling so if the cooling available is higher so to the peri near the periphery a higher storage of with the red color for different uh, time periods for uh, for different time it is uh, shown how uh, the story it is taking play how the uh, lighted will be fully saturated you can see the completely it is red it is fully saturated so this on the right hand side is the density at the different locations within the here so there is another study that is conducted we conducted at SET this is actually with a, a aluminum foam for better heat transfer so incorporation of that uh, how the the storage will be, uh, see a faster reaction rate over here so this is a better idea so uh, it is a good idea to include uh, aluminum so this uh, some study that has taken place again in uh, our city uh, you can use uh, you can think of a container with the uh, dimples that is provided so uh, the advantage of dimples is uh, uh, the stresses the wall stresses it can withstand the walls and another thing is it can act as uh, a good uh, heat uh, heat transfer enhancement uh, technology this uh, device can dissipate heat faster and higher uh, storage stresses so that is this is studied in a, with the using a discrete element method where you can see the hydrogen uh, hydrate particles assumed to be spheres so you can see that and uh, you can see the stresses so this will be instead of a lot of uh, stresses that is for bottom so this actually alleviate the stresses so there is another heat transfer enhancement uh, the metallic inserts so you can think of like a mesh like uh, thing so this will actually control the uh, separation of the metal hydride and another advantage is if you make use of the mesh uh, the uh, heat transfer much better and it leads to a faster hydrogen storage there is another one that is with, uh, uh, storage device embedded with a silicon carbide foam so silicon carbide is uh, a one material uh, the cost that is having a very high storage high th thermal conductivity used for the storing uh, uh, metal has got a lot of area it has it offers a lot of surface area so this silicon carbide foam that will offers a lot of surface area for heat transfer and it will actually favorably influences uh, the storage rate another one that is with embedded faces uh, this can be uh, a device without any uh, water circulation because the application in uh, uh, vehicles with uh, coolant circulation may be sometimes an issue and the better one uh, could be an application of a phase change material so this is a study that is in material uh, where uh, whenever there is taking place a lot of heat will be liberated and this heat will be used for the phase transformation of the phase change material and uh, during the endothermic reaction uh, during the absorption of uh, during the desorption of hydrogen so this will again uh, convert it back to the solid form so the phase change material will fa change phase and during that the energy that is generated and uh, absorbed within the device that will be actually stored within that so you doesn't require any coolant circulation over here so this is a good one so these such devices are even uh, slowly appearing in the market even there are companies like mcfish in uh, france they are actually come up with uh, such devices so so this uh, the temperature profile of light red and uh, uh, the phase change materials so this is uh, how it is taking place or uh, what is the, the temperature profile and all it's shown over here so this is actually done with the magnesium as the hydrating material 
temperature is the order, order of uh, 600 Kelvin. So it, it is much more compared to uh, LNA 5H6. So that is in LNA 5H6, it is at got a low gravimetric storage capacity, but uh, uh, the, the heat generation, the temperature will be very less, maybe of the order of uh, some 90 degree, 100 degree Celsius. But here in maybe slightly higher, you can see some work. 300 to 350 degrees Celsius. So that is a higher temperature. So operating temperature is a bit higher. Uh, work that is done at uh, the lab at IIT Madras with uh, the experimental uh, method for the evaluation of the absorption capacity. So it, uh, it make you the uh, bath, thermostatic bath for cooling and then we have got a large number of valves and other things and it is a pretty uh, expensive mechanism because as i told you it is prone to leakage so if uh, all these complete system has to be really leak tight uh, working at a 100 bar or uh, some 50 bar so whatever the pressure in maybe it should be leak tight and you are all these setup should be uh, it makes uh, the total system to be very expensive. Even a single valve, it cost around uh, uh, 15,000 rupees. A small valve, it cost around uh, uh, 15,000 rupees. A uh, sage, like, uh, sage lock uh, make. So Indian valves are not good. So the total device, the experimental setup is uh, a bit expensive. Uh, yeah, some of the results that is available on the, how hydrogenation is taking place with the time. Uh, uh, storage versus time. So that is how it is taking place and how the bed temperature changes. So uh, you can just shown over here. So you can see that average bed temperature, it is actually uh, going up in a really fast manner. With, uh, within a few seconds, maybe like in 10 seconds, it will reach the peak and then it will fall. So that is what is happening. Then how the storage capacity initially it goes up really fast. Then once it becomes heat transfer dependent, then the storage capacity decreases. You can see that here. This becomes uh, a flatter. The curve becomes flatter. That means it is actually heat transfer dependent and the storage capacity decreases drastically over there. Heat transfer. Some of the acknowledgments, uh, my PhD supervisors and research colleagues uh, elsewhere at different IETs and the students at SCTC, they have done excellent work. So this is only the part, uh, some of the SCT, it is not complete. So we have done several works on the actuators and we have done works on heat pumps and refrigerators. So several work uh, that we have done. Uh, then uh, some work on the wall stresses and few of them are published uh, in the reputed journals. So. Thanks to all of my uh, colleagues, uh, supervisors, first of all, then my colleagues and my students at SCTC and my principal at SCTC. Okay, thank you. So it's open to questions. You can ask uh, some questions. You can. So you have got question in uh, chat. Yeah, okay, I'll just do it. Please wait for a while. Mr. 